Hi, everyone. Welcome to our session. So my name is Asavri Navathe, and this is Karen. I'm a program manager on the Intim team, and Karen is an engineering, engineering lead. Today, we're going to be talking about the Intim SDK, how you can use it to protect your uh, line of business apps, and also the capabilities of the Intune PowerShell module. So how many of you are familiar with what Microsoft Intune is? Awesome. So for th some of you who may not be as familiar, this is kind of a summary of what Microsoft Intune is. So it's basically a cloud-based service in the enterprise mobility management space that helps you uh, enable your workforce to be productive while keeping your corporate data protected in uh, the apps and whatever resources uh, your end users need to access. So similar to other Azure services that you may have used, Microsoft Intune is available to configure in the Azure por portal. These are some of the things you can do with Intune. Uh, you can manage your mobile devices and your PC while um, your workforce um, uh, uses to uh, access company data. You can manage the mobile apps that your workforce uses. You can protect your company's information by controlling the way that your workforce accesses um, and shares it between other apps or other users. And you can also ensure that your devices and apps um, are compliant with whatever company security requirements that your organization may determine. So uh, what is the Intune SDK? So the Intune SDK enables what we call Intune App Protection Policies. Um, and what is the purpose of Intune App Protection Policies? Why would you want them? So the purpose essentially is to protect and separate your corporate apps, uh, data, and identities from the personal ones. So this diagram is kind of just um, uh, simulating what it uh, looks like on an user device. So you basically have various apps that you use for uh, doing your work uh, day to day. Uh, some of these apps are multi-identity, identity, like work, uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook, where you have a corporate account. You can also use it with a personal account. But uh, in order to actually use it, your, I, uh, your IT um, org probably has some requirements um, in order to be able to access whatever corporate data there is. So Intune helps um, enforce and set those types of policies. So app protection policies are built into all of the Microsoft Office apps, uh, Mobile Edge, and uh, other productivity apps that Microsoft built. You can um, also enable this into your own line of business apps if you're an app developer for your organization. And there are some popular third-party apps that are public store apps but are used widely in various enterprises that also have the Intune SDK integrated. Now I'm going to talk about what we have done in the last year with the Intune SDK. Um, there have been a couple of changes that we've made that are developer focused and might be of interest to those of you who are interested in using the Intune SDK. So Intune now leverages uh, Google Safety Net APIs for enrolled and unenrolled devices. So why this is beneficial is now app developers do not have to do the work to integrate the Google Safety Net APIs into their own app. So they can ensure that their apps are running on non-rooted devices by just running, uh, by just integrating the Intune SDK and applying Intune policies. So the safety net APIs can be applied to end users using enrolled devices or unenrolled devices now. Um, and essentially what these do will is uh, detect if the device has been rooted or compromised in any way. Um, and a popular apps such as Android Pay and Netflix are using these APIs in order to ensure that these devices are not running on unrooted devices and potentially bypassing things like um, payment services, for example. Um, another change that has happened is that we have grown our ecosystem of apps that support the Intune SDK um, with a lot, of a lot more Microsoft apps, such as Microsoft Stream, To Do, Power Apps, as well as other third-party uh, apps that are popular in enterprise. The Intune SDK now is now for Android is now released as a Gradle plugin. So Essentially, that the benefit of that is that it's an improved experience for the app developer, and a lot of the uh, replacements, uh, replacements to your apps classes that need to be made happen automatically with the Gradle plugin instead of manually having to do that. Um, the Intune SDK, I don't know if I mentioned, but it's also available for um, iOS. Uh, this is just this particular line is just specific to Android. We've also released a suite of sample apps. So if you go to our GitHub page, which I'll show a link to shortly, you can see the capabilities of the Intune SDK actually applied within context of a sample app. Uh, they're available in Objective-C, Swift's Xamarin, Xamarin Forms, and Java. And one of them will be used in the demo that we're doing later. 
And as usual, we are preparing for Intune Day Zero support for um, uh, the new release of both iOS and Android. Now over to Karen to talk a little bit about what has changed with the PowerShell piece. Hi, everyone. Uh, you can all hear me? Perfect. Um, so my name is Kieran. I am an uh, engineering lead within Intune. And one of the areas that my team owns is our integration with MS Graph. So we have a good coverage of Intune knowledge here. Are people familiar with MS Graph? Yeah? Um, have people already used the Intune PowerShell module for MS Graph? Anyone? Perfect. OK. So um, if you were listening to uh, some of Rajesh's talk earlier, he it reiterated a lot about how important MS Graph is to the M365 story. It's that unified view of the Microsoft APIs that allows people to really feel like this suite is one product. And from our side of it, for Intune, every action that we expose through the admin UI, they're all powered by MS Graph. So anything that can be done through the UI can also be done directly through our graph endpoints. Um, this has a lot of benefits for us. It creates that similar experience with all the other M365 suites. It gives that one endpoint that people have to know how to use and a set of technologies that can be used to communicate with our API that's the same as the everything else. Focusing in on the last one, uh, the set of technologies, the main thing that people asked for when we were releasing this was PowerShell. PowerShell was really important. And when we released, because we were on MS Graph, we natively had PowerShell support. Problem with it was it was a bit cumbersome. It wasn't um, as smooth as it could have been. You had to craft a web request yourself. You had to get the access token. You had to do a lot of the heavy lifting. And we did put some samples up there, but they were nowhere near a complete representation of our API space. So we listened to the feedback, and we released the Intune PowerShell module. And with this, it gives you that first that uh, first class experience in PowerShell for leveraging the Intune APIs. You have actual command lists, which represents all of our functionality inside there. And you can use that to script up whatever you wish against it. Um, and as we release on a monthly cadence and we light up new APIs, these new APIs in uh, MS Graph V1 will also appear in our, PowerShell, in our PowerShell module. We also took some of our more involved scenarios, some of our uh, complicated ones. One of the, and we release samples for them to show how they can be simplified through scripts. Uh, one of the ones I'll show later on is our line of business app upload. That's, we believe that's one of our most difficult scenarios to try and understand what's going on. So we've put a sample out there, and I'll show you that in a moment. And finally, the last thing that we released as part of it was our PowerShell S was our integration with Cloud Shell, which for anyone who's familiar with Cloud Shell, it's that passwordless, seamless experience that works very, very well. Now, I am going to jump out of the presentation and do something that I had intended to do when I started talking. Um, so as we released this demo, as we released this module, people really did like it. Uh, we got great feedback around um, le leveraging this PowerShell module made it much easier to script the day-to-day -day tasks that people are doing. And it was very beneficial. Well, how do we lose the screen? OK. Yeah, I guess when we came out of the presentation. Da -da -da. Uh, let me just plug it open. Yeah, we'll plug it back in. Sorry. Experiencing technical difficulties. Lost the screen. Bring the screen back. While we're waiting for that, I'll talk through it. So because it's build, I wanted to take a little bit of a different slant on it than just saying scripting the day-to-day -day tasks that an admin would normally do. I wanted to look at it from the developer's perspective and how the PowerShell module can help a developer in their day-to-day -day tasks. So what I have here, once the screen will come back at some point, is a um, Azure DevOps uh, repository, which has a clone of um, the MAM SDK sample app. So it's an, it's an app. It's building an APK that's integrated with our MAM SDK. When we build it, the output of it will be the APK. There will be a drop that includes it. And what we have done is we have hooked that to a release, which will go download our PowerShell module. Um, at the moment, it actually has credentials inside it that are stored securely. Uh, we'll authenticate with MS Graph. 
takes the APK that's been downloaded and uploads it to Intune. The benefit of this is that now, as an app developer, if I check in any changes, if I make any improvements to the app, I don't have to go through a long, convoluted manual process in order to be able to upload and deploy my apps out to a set of test users. Great, we're almost back. Um, instead, I get a continuous integration, continuous deployment uh, system where as I check in, it will build, it will upload it to Intune, it can deploy it to a group of users, or to a group of users or devices, thanks. And then it will work. Now that we're here, okay, so it's throwing me off. You can see that the build that I kicked off has not yet finished. So I'll do my best impression of a cooking show, and here is one I made earlier. Uh, if we go into this release, we will see there are four tasks at the end of it. Okay. Four tasks at the end of it. Uh, we have downloading the sample script that I referred to earlier. And then we have actually uploading it to Intune. And just to show you how easy it was to actually put these, to put these together, we'll go to edit the deployment. We'll look at the tasks. Installing the SDK. Uh, it's in the power. It's in PowerShell. Uh, downloading the sample, the sample script that we have. Simple matter of downloading it from our GitHub repository, and then uploading the app to Intune. It authenticates. It takes the app, and it uploads it. And just to show you what it looks like at the end of the day. This is the app that I uploaded to it, and each version that we have published here actually maps to the release that we have built. So between today and yesterday, I have done this 32 times. Um, and, that is the, and that is the experience. So leveraging Intune and MS Graph and Azure DevOps, we create a continuous integration, continuous deployment experience for app developers. So thank you very much. And now I shall hand you back. Thanks, Karen. So what Karen just showed you was this demo. So what do we do now that our app is uploaded into the Intune console? How am I applying and selecting which app protection policies I want to target to this app that I have integrated the Intune SDK into? So in order to go that, uh, in order to do that, you would have to go to the uh, Intune app protection policies page, which is here. So this is a test policy that I made ahead of time. And essentially, there are a couple of things that you have to make sure you do. So to start off, you want to pick what settings you want to apply. It. So we divided them into settings related to data protection, access into the app itself, and conditions based on which the app should launch or not launch. Some of the settings that we have are, uh, in particular, are restricting cut, copy, paste, restricting the ability to save into unmanaged locations, um, root detection, applying a Intune pin to the app itself. So if you wanted an end user to enter a pin to access any corporate apps, they would need to meet whatever the pin requirements were set as per Intune policy, as well as other condition, uh, conditions that you can set under conditional launch, such as how many times they can enter the pin, what devices the app should be able to run on in terms of Android manufacturer or iOS model, so that's basically what that looks like. Um, and then you want to pick which apps this should apply to. So the app that uh, Karen uploaded would ideally need to have policy targeted as per this page. This is a mix of both our third party and Microsoft apps. So here I've targeted it to Outlook and OneDrive. As you can see, some of our most commonly used uh, apps uh, with app protection. And then the last thing you want to make sure you do is assign it to a user. So all of these users are the ones that are in your um, Active Directory. And I've assigned it to a group called Group Asavri, which has just me in it for now. So essentially, once you've done all of that, when your end user who is in the group that I've just picked when they try to sign in to the app um, that has been applied policy, they will have to make sure that they abide by whatever policies the admin has set. And this happens because the app has the Intune SDK integrated into it. So um, if anyone wants to see kind of what that would look like on the app, come talk to us after. Um, we have a test Android and test iOS device that we can show you what a policy might look like for the end user. 
So to conclude, just want to give you guys um, some tools that you can uh, go to to look for more information. So we, all of our uh, developer tools for the SDK are available on our GitHub site, as well as the uh, Intune PowerShell SDK under the URLs above. If you have any questions about the Intune SDK, mail us at this alias. Uh, we'll respond to you if you're interested. If you need to know, does this work for me? Does th is this supported on the platform that I'm using to develop my apps? And lastly, we'll be here at Build if you want to talk to us and see if uh, uh, these scenarios and this feature set is uh, right for you. That's all. Thank you for coming. <laughs>